uh, good evening everyone uh, i'll be talking on uh, anatomy biomechanics and concepts of acl reconstruction so first acl is a central important ligament in the knee which provides stability for anterior tibial translation and provides rotational stability as well of late there is an increased incidence as per the swedish and the us registry so my talk will be on anatomy of uh, acl uh, relevant biomechanics and concepts of acl reconstruction so acl is a dense band of connective tissue that connects the femur and the tibia and major internal stabilizing or uh, stabilizing structure in the knee the dimensions of acl are the total the length of acl would be around 38 to 44 mm width would be around uh, 7 to 12 mm in various people and maximum cross sectional area is at the mid substance level and femoral uh, femoral attachment has 34 mm of cross sectional area and uh, tibial has 42 mm to understand the better anatomy from the recent cadaveric dissections the two um uh, two models has been put forth one is the bundle concept and the other is a ribbon concept of late so first the bundle concept the um, acl contains two bundles that is antero medial bundle and the postero postero lateral bundle um uh, defined by their respective insertions and few 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 uh, authors have shown there is a intermediate bundle by dissecting out the one of the bundle the antero medial bundle is tight during the flexion and postero lateral is tight during an extension and postero lateral bundle plays a critical low role in controlling the rotational stability so the femoral attachment is on the medial surface of the femoral condyle over a ovoid area with anterior straight border and a posterior convex border anterior straight border and the posterior convex border and uh, two bundles are separated by the bifurcate ridge so here we can see that uh, the lateral intercondylar ridge is nothing but the continuation of the posterior cortex and the uh, superior uh, posterior aspect this is the posterior the knee is in flexion the posterior aspect is am bundle and inferior is the pl bundle separated by the lateral bifurcate ridge so the ribbon concept uh, is by the anatomical dissection by uh, smikinski et al in 2012 from various have shown that the A the native acl is a flat structure uh, like a, a group of fibers forming a ribbon like structure which is horizontal um, in, in when the knee is flexed and and it is vertical when the knee is uh, extended so here in the larger picture we can see that uh, the bundles of uh, bundles together form the ribbon like structure and then decussate and then gets attached to the respective areas the tibial the tibial attachment is broader than the femoral attachment it's larger and broader and triang triangular in shape with apex directed posteriorly so in the bundle concept the anterior aspect is anterior and medial aspect is the antero medial bundle and posterior and slightly lateral is the postero lateral bundle of the tibial attachment so the ribbon concept just before the insertion they kind of form the bundles together form a c shaped bony uh, bony bony kind of bony attachment uh, surrounding the anterior root of the lateral meniscus and acl surrounds and covers the anterior root of lateral meniscus so the blood supply uh, is a, um, a minimal blood supply is from the femoral attachment and less from the tibial attachment the tendency towards uh, worse healing of this region in these parts the nerve supply is from posterior tibial nerve and uh, neural structures the proprioceptor and mechanoreceptors are seen at this point so a uh, arthroscopic view of uh, this attachments are uh, you can see the anteriorly uh, and the and then the posteriorly divided by the intercondylar ridge and the bifurcate ridge showing the attachment of the different bundles and again the tibial attachment here we can see arthroscopic picture coming to biomechanics is determined by the geometry of the ligament and tensile characteristics of a ligament um the mid substance on the insertional site so the orientation of the fibers sorry the orientation of the fibers at the femoral attachment is along the long axis of the femur uh, whereas the tibial uh, 
tibial attachment is along the antero posterior axis so this these attachment makes the bundle twist around each other when the knee goes for flexion of the knee the load to elongation so this is a graph showing the uh, amount of uh, force and the elongation of the ligament and and then the when the force is more the breaking point of the ligament and it's compared with the patella tendon is uh, seen in this coming to stress strain relation of the normal acl the cyclic loading of uh, acl causes gradual creep and relaxation that is increase in the length uh, length of the tendon on the elongation during the normal physical activity but it returns back to original stiffness after a period of rest, uh, rest. so uh, the stress strain of particular bundle uh, in this graphical representation shows that anteromedial bundle is tight uh, anteromedial bundle is tight in flexion so when the this is a range of flexion it is tight in flexion whereas postural Postulateral bundle is tight in extension, uh, and the the two bundles are not isometric throughout the range, uh, where we can see that in the extension the bundles are parallel to each other, whereas in the knee flex we can see that it is twisting around, and also the the width is also differs during the flexion and extension of the knee. So this is a complex anatomy of the normal native ACL. So ACL mainly functions in concert with other anatomical structures to maintain the static and dynamic equilibrium. Uh, uh, its primary function is to uh, res uh, resist the excessive anterior translation and secondary uh, rotational movement and some amount of varus and valgus stability it provides. Anteromedial bundle provides resistance to translation of the anterior uh, dryer test where postolateral bundle resists the rotation that is pivot shift. A good quality MRI is possible to determine the two bundles separately uh, in respective uh, uh, coronal and the sagittal sections. Um, coming to graft option, there are various graft options for the ACL reconstruction. Most commonly used are uh, bone patella tendon bone or hamstring tendon grafts, uh, quadriceps tendon. Uh, uh, peroneal, allo, uh, peroneal longus and allografts are also used in uh, some conditions. So the evolution of concepts of uh, ACL reconstruction started with the uh, open repair of uh, ACL and extra articular procedures like Lamer procedures. Later, the repair with augmentation uh, were tried, but uh, they all had very poor results. So they were slowly uh, given up and then the bone patellar tendon bone graft uh, came, uh, the trans technique came in uh, early 90s uh, and the anatomical uh, tunnels and single bundle, double bundle concept came in early 2000 and then now the re-entry of bone butler, bone tendon from the ribbon concept uh, is the ongoing phenomena in the evolution of ACL reconstruction. Uh, from 2000 onwards, uh, there is increased interest in uh, ACL repairs with or without augmentation and remnant preservation surgeries and uh, 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 the biological reconstructions and internal brace uh, also has been tried. So the concept for the femoral side, uh, it started with the open uh, surgeries in the early 80s. And uh, in the early 90s, trans technique uh, achieved the higher uh, uh, femoral entry point, which was slightly around the, uh, the, the intracondylar ridge. Uh, and also the double bundle also had uh, um, with the trans technique uh, around the intracondylar ridge. But once the anatomical single bundle uh, reconstruction came and better understanding from cadaveric dissection, uh, the single bundle concepts have taken over the double bundle concepts. So the, there is not much variation in the uh, tibial tunnel uh, placement uh, in, uh, in the ACL reconstructions. So the current concepts are not all ACL injuries are same. ACL repair with or without augmentation are tried in acute uh, acute uh, ACL tear of Sherman type 1 and type 2, that is femoral site tears and uh, remnant preservation uh, techniques are tried to uh, uh, keep the functions of the 
uh, functions and the proprioception functions of the knee intact. And the biological, the reason concept is a biological reconstruction where one of the bundle we can be repaired and the other uh, uh, other bundle can be reconstruction can be done uh, with internal bracing in also tried in ACL repair and in cases of, uh, ACL reconstruct depending on the uh, patients uh, and the physiological activities. And last uh, but not the least, when whenever there are there is hyperextension of patients. ALL reconstruction or LET are also being tried. Thank you.